Hello everybody, welcome back. Make a, a quick video here. Uh, sorry I didn't make a video yesterday and I didn't even make it to the Patreon live stream on, on Friday. Reason being is that it's not at the moment, but soon it's going to be my birthday and then basically what happened on Friday is that I had a surprise birthday party and I basically had, a lot, basically I, I just got absolutely demolished extremely quickly and yesterday was a write-off and uh, there's no point in me trying to uh, have any opinion on <laughs> on these charts when you can barely see straight. So yeah, yesterday was a write off. Friday, I was I I went you know took my body and brain to wrecked city basically, which is something I rarely do these days. And so I'm just about feeling as about as close to normal as I have done over the last 48 hours um, now. So let's let's have a look at these. Uh, let's have a look at these markets. Sunday again, bit of a random sort of day. Looking at this on a one hourly chart, we can basically see how uh, Bitcoin has been floating up and above uh, and down and below the, the 34,000, uh, which was basically where I left this on Friday morning was basically saying look, above uh, 34,200, good. Below, you know, we should expect lower. So, you know, we're floating between those two areas. And still, even at this point now, looking at this on the four hourly, you know, we do have a very short space of time um, where we came up above it and then closed below it. We're basically talking a four hourly Bollinger Band at this point now, which has, which has actually come down a little bit further. So closures above 34,000, we'll call it 34,150, uh, has every chance to, uh, to, to carry on with this uptrend, to which we are. This is an uptrend, obviously. We all know that. We can see that. I know we want to see pullbacks or we expect to see pullbacks, and that is the risk we um, we, we take if taking positions at these levels, obviously. Um, but the pullbacks can be supported at any one of these moving averages, as we can already see that. The 20 exponential seems to be holding quite well on the 4 hourly, which is basically just below the 34,000. Then below that, we've got a, uh, a 33,000, we can call it, just ever so slightly below that, 32,925, and, and trending up, that's your 50, simple and exponential. And then you've got your horizontal major zone, which is the previous resistance. Obviously, we'd hope to see a support if we came down to that. It's around about 31,900 or thereabouts. So let's have a look at the daily then, shall we? See what's going on the daily. We're getting a support right now on the seven simples. The first moving average that we've touched since this uptrend really broke out from the 28,000 uh, 500 zone. And normally this indicates the last portion of an uptrend. Um, uh, whether you're bullish or bearish, and when you, once you start, the, once the seven simple starts to be relevant, then uh, you, you're like, all right, fine. We're, we're kind of on borrowed time usually at this point now. But it doesn't mean that we can't have a significant run from it. It's the first major moving average, one that you don't see getting uh, tested unless you're extremely bearish or extremely bullish, and it's like the last stages of, of a pump or a dump, and we're getting it now. So that that could easily have the power to take us up to the next major level which is just short $38,000. So and that's where I'd imagine it take us to be honest with you uh, into next week. Um that that's how it looks right now uh, on on the daily that that is how it's presenting itself. And again, you know, when you've got price action like this which is flat as a pancake Pretty much, yeah. This is, I mean, this is pretty handy for me, really, because the, <laughs> the price has been literally sideways uh, since I had my first Steiner of beer, um, which is fine, you know. So there's no, no. It was, it was not a stressful time. It, uh, there was no, uh, uh, there was no compulsion to want to uh, look at charts. Really, it was basically every time I looked at it, it was more or less exactly the same. So uh, we're looking. We are looking. To be honest with you, I am expecting. Uh, we are looking for this to actually move up and continue onwards before a consolidation. At this moment in time, that's kind of how it looks. And if we just run through some of these altcoins, the ones that um, I've highlighted, they're basically the same chart. Uh, Algorand actually a bit better than Bitcoin's chart on a short-term time frame. Atom a little bit better than uh, as well. Um, uh, Chainlink still better. Ethereum to Bitcoin, not so not so great. <laughs> uh, XRP looking great. These are all on the one hourly, um, and I suppose we'll, we'll take ourselves over to Ethereum as well. Uh, not not quite so great. So some of these other altcoins, other than Ethereum, actually looking okay for continuation. So I I, I do favour the, the upside on uh, on on more or less everything. A sweeping statement, but more or less everything I expect to continue to go up. We've not broken out yet, but just just based on what we saw there on Bitcoin's daily. Um, I think there's further upside. So 38,000 is definitely uh, a, a very realistic target for Bitcoin, and that should carry alt with it. 
Um, uh, you know, when it comes to all the other altcoins that we that we've done, like the big trades, you know, um, you know, going back over the last month now, I mean, they have really, really outperformed Bitcoin. Just you know, we've got RNDR, IN, uh, INJ, we've got Chainlink, obviously BSV. Now, I still think Algorand can do it. Um, I'm not so sure about Atom. I hope Atom can do it. I'm pretty sure XRP is going to do it. But for, but it's uh, absolutely a 100 percent. Uh, without uh, question, a Bitcoin-driven market right now. And unless you've got a chart which is better than Bitcoin, which again is far and few between. At the moment, though, things might be changing. The four hourlies for most altcoins are perking up, so they are actually looking quite good. But they've not quite got anywhere close to a, a decent chart on the daily. Um, then, then yeah, there is there is more than hope. There is evidence to say that actually, if Bitcoin runs all the way up to thirty eight thousand and kind of lives there for a little while, then a, then an alt season can be generated on the back of the altcoins' um, own charts. Which again, uh, four hourlies are looking quite good for most altcoins. You just want that to cross over to breakouts on the daily for the much bigger gains. Which you know that sounds reasonable to expect that kind of move after a Bitcoin driven move, like a major a major one. You know, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, like I say, um, I'm still not 100% here. I'm, uh, yeah, you know, I've got to, uh, I've got to screw my head back on again. Uh, but uh, starting from tomorrow, we'll be back to normal. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping at least. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not quite out for drinking these days. It's just not for me. Uh, but you know, you can't just, you can't just say when, when you have a surprise birthday party, you can't just say, Nah, it's not for me this time. I'm going back home early night, early night. <laughs> Peer pressure. And peer pressure wins. Right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Um, next week does look quite good, um, I have to say. And I'm more than optimistic. I think it's more likely that we continue up. Even if it uh, even if it starts with a pullback down to the uh, the horizontal area, to, uh, to 32,000, basically. But um, I, I'm more than optimistic about this. I'm actually quite hopeful. I think it's quite likely that we see a 38, maybe a wick higher. But definitely 38 is, uh, is a very realistic target. Right. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Take it easy.